Hello everybody, this is Leah Cook with Confident Companions and in this Google slide we're going to talk about Step 2 of Do Nothing Training. The purpose of Step 2 is to reinforce your dog's choice to disengage from the stimulus by looking back at you without any interference from us. We want them to start understanding that looking away from the stimulus on their own is a very wise decision. As you know, in Step 1 we're preventing the dog from doing anything about the stimulus. One thing we have to be mindful of during step one is that we're marking while the dog is paying attention to the stimulus. Some dogs may start to think that they should pay attention to the stimulus in order to get their reward. This is why from the very beginning, as soon as you mark in step one, I make sure that you know to lure their heads back towards you so that they get their treat while they are not looking directly at the stimulus. So let's watch the video to see what step two looks like in action. Very good. We're playing the name game here. And now we're going to switch to step two. Okay, now this time I want you to, if she looks over there, let her look and don't immediately call her name. I want to see if she'll look back at you. There. Pay. Very good. Pay. So if she looks like that, her tail isn't moving a whole lot. She looks like she's pretty comfortable in that position. Her arousal level is lower. Let her look. And then that is what I want you to pay. Very good. Awesome job, Amy. All right. So the mechanics of step two is what we need to talk about next. So the first thing that needs to happen is your dog needs to perceive the stimulus. It's not about when you notice it. It's about when your dog notices it. Um, perception for the context of this training includes the same thing that it did in step one, which is sight, sound, or smell. Your dog should do nothing about the stimulus once they see it. Within two seconds, your dog should look away from the stimulus and back at you. If they don't look away within two seconds, you need to interrupt their focus because what's most likely happening is they're starting to do what I call stewing and they're thinking about, you know, possibly making a bad choice. So you need to help that not help them make a good choice. So help them disengage by putting a lure in front of their face, add some distance, or if you have a helper, make whatever they were doing less intense. If they aren't able to disengage from the stimulus and look at you, you either haven't done enough of the name game, you may need to prompt their name a couple repetitions just to let them know that's what you want in this context, kind of like what we were doing with Emmy. Um, this was the first time she had ever done step two, so we got her in the position that she was most comfortable in, which was a down. And then we started playing the name game anytime she would look at people um, or any of the dogs that were in the store. So once she knew what we were wanting, and what was a reinforceable behavior in that context, we quickly shifted to step two and stopped prompting her name because what we don't want to do is have to call our dogs away from everything. We want this to be a choice that they make independently from us. And you get what you train for. So if you're constantly calling your dog away from things or calling their attention away from everything, it's not going to happen without that prompt. So again, the name game is important but it is a separate exercise from step two. Um, when your dog does look at you, you want to mark and reward in line with your body. So let's go through these steps one more time and uh, we're just not we're just going to pretend like you don't have any kind of hiccups during your training session. So your dog notices the stimulus and very quickly within two seconds they're looking back at you and then you're going to mark and reward. So again your dog isn't doing anything about it Anyway, they just notice it, they don't do anything, they look back at you, and you mark and reward. Alright, so when should you do step two? The key here is that your dog's arousal level is much lower than it was during step one moments. Okay, you shouldn't feel like um, you're on the edge of losing your dog, so to speak, or anything like that. So if their movements aren't very rigid, fast, or twitchy, like during step one... As soon as they notice the stimulus, you mark, put the cookie to their nose, and lure back in line with your body. During step one, their arousal level is high and their movements can be kind of rigid. So as soon as they get that cookie, they may snap their head back looking at that dog or looking at that person or that bicycle. During step two, it shouldn't feel like that. When they get their cookie, they should just casually, you know, look back in the direction of the stimulus if they feel like they need to. But it should not be rigid, fast, or twitchy. They shouldn't be so excited about it. Okay, so if you determine based on your dog's body language 
um, that it would be easy for them to look away from the stimulus, that's also a situation where you could try to do step two. Um, remember that step two is about shifting the focus of our work to looking away from the stimulus. Having a lower arousal level allows your dog to think more clearly and it makes it easier for your dog to make quality decisions without much help from us. I'm all about helping my dog when he can't do better, but since we're a team, when he can do better, I expect him to do that. And in step, to, excuse me, in step two, he can offer you more of himself. So wait for him to look back at you before you mark and reward. Uh, one thing that I should mention here is that these steps are not linear, okay? If you start noticing that your dog's arousal level is starting to build again or your helper's dog did something that really excited your dog again, you need to go back to step one, okay? Because remember, sudden changes in the environment, the dog's arousal level spikes, you need to go back to step one. Uh, going back and forth between these steps is more like a dance uh, with your dog's arousal level as it goes up and down. So don't start thinking like, well, we've done step one enough with dogs. So now we're at step two. That's not how that works. In every in interaction you have with a new stimulus, um, you may be doing step one with it. You may be doing step two. You may be doing a combination of both. Um, but don't ever get fixated on we've done enough of step one, so I'm only going to do step two. That's going to get you into trouble. So remember, it's just a dance but uh, with your dog's arousal level as it goes up and down. Thank you guys for watching, and if you have any questions, please let me know.